When a narcissist gaslights you, their purpose is not to lie to you. It's not as simple as that. It's not as simple as concealing facts. That can be caught. No. Their main purpose is to distort your reality, change your emotions that you feel towards their actions, your actions, the relationship, and the world in general. For what purpose? Well, they want you to believe you are not seeing things correctly. You are feeling the wrong feelings and you should give them a free pass because they have not done anything wrong. If there is anybody who is at fault, it's you. That's how they hijack your brain. And it's not a thought that you think, it's a total somatic state, a bodily state that one experiences which traumatizes them to their core. It is how they shape the environment and every element in it is placed so strategically to scream one thing. You are crazy. You are at fault. A time comes in such a relationship when you naturally, without them telling you anything at all, take the blame for something that you clearly have not done. That is what is called hijacking of your mind and heart. They penetrate all the way down deep to your soul and that's what makes it so difficult and so complex for any survivor to leave such a toxic relationship. In this episode, I'll be talking about two ugly, vicious lies a narcissist programs you to believe that breaks your spirit. My name is Danish. I'm a psychologist, trauma therapist and a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Welcome to my channel. Lie number one, this is the biggest lie amongst all lies they tell you. We are equally responsible for any conflict, any problem in the relationship. It takes two to tango, two hands to clap. They make it seem like, oh, this is a healthy relationship where partners have problems with each other because there is conflict of interest or something else going on. It's not just me. They apply the dynamics of a healthy relationship to a totally rotten relationship where they are the perpetrator, they are the only abuser and you are a victim, you are the survivor. And you must remember, abuse is never a victim's fault. However, they twist it so much so that you believe, oh, yeah, I screamed, I yelled as well, I cussed, I did this, I did that, I was also out of control, I also gave them silent treatment when you were just taking a pause, you were emotionally numb. You, your brain starts counting all the things that you have done which were a genuine biologically correct response to their abuse. We call it reaction to their abuse, not even reactive abuse. You were not abusive. And then those thoughts convince you that yes, you must take responsibility as well. You're not a saint. And unfortunately, in the process of taking responsibility for the things that you have not done, you're not able to hold them accountable. They make you lose credibility and they escape easily. Then they want to end it um, with, on, on good terms and then move on in their life, giving you, gifting you a guilty conscience that you also destroyed the relationship when it was them who cheated on you. It was this person who harassed you physically, emotionally, mentally and sometimes sexually as well. When this is the person who made it seem like they are going to make your life a heaven but then ended up turning it into a blazing hell. Whose fault is it? Yours? Of course not. You were who you are today. Right from the beginning, you, were, you have been consistent. You are predictable. Who became unpredictable? You are them. The narcissist, of course. Then how is it your fault? A narcissistic relationship is a special type of relationship where it does not take two to tango. It takes only one person to set everything on fire. Why did you end up giving them so many chances and they made it seem like, oh, they're they are going to take you back. They're going to be merciful at, at you, towards you. They'll be just accepting your apology when you had done nothing wrong. You just didn't want them to leave you. Why do you feel it's your responsibility to fix it and to sort it out and they never ever were there putting in the same efforts? All of a sudden, when it comes to taking responsibility, they don't want to. They don't want to feel the shame. They want partners in it. If there is anything good, 
they will take the credit. They will make it seem like, oh, it happened because of them. But if there is something bad, something like this, it's because of you, you did it. And if that doesn't work, if there is undeniable proof against them, they'll make it seem like we both did it. We are both at fault. We both must be punished. 50-50 custody, 50-50 division of the assets. That's it. When the, in my opinion, the fair case is, you should get 90% of it for all the damage they have caused you, all the time they have wasted. And you should get 100% custody of the kids because they are a monster. They are not even a parent. They are just loving the role they get to play, the role of a Disneyland dad or a Disneyland mom, spending that one hour or a couple of days torturing you or them. That's what it is all about. It's called post-separation abuse. They keep fighting you until they get a big reaction out of you to prove to court that, see, this is the crazy one that I'm dealing with. So you can't be amicable, cooperative, understanding, open, and expect the same from your narcissistic co-parent if you're dealing with one. You have to have a strategy in place. And I have taught that in depth in my Master Co-Parenting with a Narcissist program in which I help you understand how to use a narcissist's traits against them so that you can let your healing begin and help your children heal as well after cornering the narc. And then I give you all the practical tools to talk to your children properly, to deal with them in the court system, to find your lawyer, to just every possible script there could be to know how to devise a plan and increase your chances at winning. If you want instant access, click the i button above or the link in the description of this episode and become a master at co-parenting with them. Number two, the narcissist wants you to believe they have not changed even a tiny bit. In every narcissistic relationship, the mask slips and the narcissist reveals their true self. They can't help but be a narcissist. Devaluation happens. But they want you to believe you are imagining things. You're creating things on purpose to hurt them, to villainize them. They have been nothing but nice to you. They have been the same person right from the beginning. So that is extreme form of gaslighting. There's no such thing as lack or absence of affection. They have been affectionate. What are you talking about? Oh, but you, you don't call me as much as you used to. You don't want us to get physically intimate. Oh, it's because of you, because you smell. Or you're clingy, you're too sensitive. It comes back to you. You are faulty and that's why I am creating distance. I'm running away. Because you changed. This is how they twist the situation. They say you changed. In the beginning, I thought you are an amazing, wonderful person. But now, I don't like this version of you. Had I known you are this, I would have never ever accepted you as my partner. You have changed and that's why you see that change in me. That's why I am, I am disgusted with you. I don't want to do anything with you. I am not changed. You are changed. So this is a projection. And then that will shock you. What will you do? You tell me. What will you do after that? Right, you will start changing yourself. That is the depersonalization. That's how your personality breaks down. People pleasing shows up. So you start self-sacrificing. You start giving them more. They start taking. They ask for more. You give more limitlessly. And you bit by bit, piece by piece, die and lose yourself and give all of what you have to offer. And still it's not enough. And then still they will say, because of you, because of this and because of that. They want you to completely ignore the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde phenomenon that is a part and a parcel of every narcissistic relationship. They want you to think it's your friends are lying to you. They want our relationship to disintegrate. They're telling you things that never happened. I'm the same person all the time. I become angry only when you trigger me. If you talk to me in this way, and they will give you a script which will be all about becoming subservient and swallowing your tongue, then I'll be okay. See? Problem solved. You do all of that, but still nothing changes. At the end of it, there's the same person. It's true 
The only person that changes in a narcissistic relationship is you. You were happy, go lucky, you were, you were bubbly, you were everything, everything that you loved about yourself before meeting the narcissist. But after m meeting them and getting married to them or entering into a relationship with them, you changed, you turned into a shell of you or somebody you do not recognize anymore. You have lost your interests, you, are lo you have lost your hobbies, you have lost your spark. And now you don't have friends, you don't want to be around people. Who has changed you? This piece of a shit? He or she was the same person right from the beginning, the same person. The only difference is they had concealed it from you. They had kept it hidden from you. They only revealed it when they knew they had established full control. So it's true. They didn't change. It's only you who changed in a bad way. And they were the same person when they tell you, I haven't changed. Oh yeah, they were as bad as they are today. They want you to believe all the problems that are in the relationship you are making up. Everything's okay. Small things you should forgive and forget and move on and act like nothing's happening. When I approach you, smile, put a smile on your face. Even if I am walking all over you and treating you like a piece of furniture and throwing you around, tossing you around, playing with you like you are a toy. That, oh, that's not a problem. The problem is you're not okay with that behavior. I expect, I'm until, I'm until, I expect you to be okay. I am entitled to using you. What's the problem? What's the problem with you? You do not have enough tolerance for that, so you should work on yourself. That is the delusional thinking. So that was number two. Let me know which one of these did you resonate with the most in the comments below. I will talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.